Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sinquetta, and I'm here to talk about a chapter in my book that was on my heart, The Master Reset. And I wanted to talk about the chapter Relationship Goals. You know, that's my little spin, my interpretation of what's popular in culture. You know, we see on social media, people post their pictures of their boyfriend, girlfriends, and like, and people be like, oh, that's Relationship Goals, because they seem so one and so in sync and so into each other. And that's the thing. I was thinking about what if we kept that same energy when it came to our relationship with God? Like, as I was reading, rereading that chapter of my book, I'm just like, dang, I was really like going there. <laughs> like one of the things I said was like, um, I wonder what would happen if we spent all those hours um talking to god like we do those guys that you know we have a crush on the guys that you like you know when you when you're like dating and you're talking to someone you could spend hours on the phone with them like just getting to know them they getting to know you y'all vibing but i'm just i was thinking to myself like okay we can do that with a person but you know we can only stay in prayer for like a few minutes and then we're trying to figure out what to say so it's almost like we have to learn how to be intimate with the Lord, you know, sharing our problems, our fears, the things that we want to do with him like we do with people, you know what I mean? And I just felt like that is the parallel. The relationship goal is to be like that and walk like that and be on one accord with God. You know, you know him as you open up yourself and like and he's revealing himself to you, you know, it's like a nice little partnership or whatever. So with that, it just made me think about other ways that we put man before God. And I feel like one way that we definitely do that is in relationships and boyfriend, girlfriend relationships. You know what I mean? Like a person, a person can become your God. Like you try to please them. You want to do everything right for them. But like I said, again, we don't be having that same kind of energy for God. Like we could read the Bible. It can say like, don't do this, don't do that. And I, I really feel like when I read the Bible, I told myself um, a while ago, like I was going to read the Bible with an open mind. And the Bible does not have a bunch of rules. It's, it's, it's commandments or whatever, but it's not, it's not to come down on you. You know, yes, do them, live according to it. But if you don't, it's really on you. <laughs> and, and you cannot do them too. That's the thing. Like I, I just... <laughs> Sometimes I feel like people think that it's really hard to um, follow scriptures. And it's not its not a simple thing. It's, it's a lot of putting you off the place of God. Because a lot of times, that's what we are. We're like little gods to ourselves. We want to do what we want to do, how we want to do it. You know what I mean? And a lot of times we say we love God, but we don't be trying to do what he tell us to do. You know what I mean? We say God is our father, but we don't listen. So that's really what the Bible is about. It's about like taking yourself off of the leadership and then falling into the leadership of Christ, like, you know, going by what the word says. So I said all that to say, a lot of times in relationships, you know what I mean? Like we will tell our friends, like we know this person isn't good for us, but we will become lawyers. Like, uh-uh, I'm not leaving him. He's not that much of a bad person. He's this, he's not that. Da -da -da -da. You know, we will argue our friends down just to stay with somebody. But the moment somebody offends you at church, you're ready to throw in a child. All the church people is the same. Uh-uh, you know what I mean? And it's just like, oh my gosh, what if we just gave God a second chance? Now, it is some people in church that can be bogus, but you know what I mean? You you may not need to go into the four uh, corners, four walls of a church, but don't neglect your relationship with God at all. You know what I mean? You can always pray in your heart. You can always read your Bible at home, in your car, at the park, wherever. You know what I mean? That's the thing that I feel like don't come away off of. You know what I mean? So I say all that to say that. But at the same time, I just was really thinking about that. Like our relationship goal. Oh, yeah. The book is up there. The relationship goal will always be to have that like lit relationship with you and the Lord where, you know, you guys are like like that and people can see it and feel it on you evidence. I remember like one of my coworkers was like, it's something about you, Sinquetta. Like, you know the Lord. I'm like, yeah. And then we started talking like that. You know what I mean? And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that people can see like God's light on me, I guess, not to brag or to boast because, you know, I, I got to stay close to him because if not, I will go crazy. I'll be punching people in their face. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know how I can go, <laughs> but thank 
thank God that, you know, like I'm able to read the word of God and then have compassion for other people because I'm, I can't be like this on my own. You know what I mean? I like to hold grudges. I like to not forgive. You know, you, you do something to me. Oh, okay. You know, that's, that's, you know, how I really want to be. But thank God for Jesus, you know? <laughs> so I know like not to look at people um, and know that if someone hurts me, they're probably hurting. And who am I? to even hold a grudge when I really think about it, when I think about all that God has done for me and how I be sinning against him or have how I've sinned against him and how he still love me and give me breath to breathe. So, mm -mm. I, you know what I mean? I, I am nobody. <laughs> so people can offend me, do whatever they want. Glory to God anyhow, because I just know that I be needing grace. So that kind of helps me extend grace to other people. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, scripture do say that like forgive so God can forgive you. So it's almost like when I when I think about it in those kind of terms, just like, okay, I'll let it go. Cause I've been needing God's forgiveness. I, I think I told y'all about that one time I went to bed mad. I let the sun go down on my wrath. Mm -hmm, Cause you know that's the scripture. You gotta like let things go, you know? <laughs> but mm -mm, Sinqueta didn't. And then Sinqueta tried to wake up the next day and go about her day like normal. But when it was time for Sinqueta to pray, you know she couldn't. It was like a wall was blocking me from praying, like to you know what I mean? To like get in the presence of the Lord. It was like something was blocking. And I realized it was that unforgiveness. It was me getting smart with somebody. It was me giving somebody a piece of my mind the day before. Ooh, it was a lot of anger in there. So that just blocked me from getting to the feet of the Lord in my prayer time. So now I know like I don't have time to be holding grudges against people. Like y'all ain't going to mess up my prayer because I need to talk to the lord <laughs> so i i know how important that is now before i really didn't you know what i mean but it wasn't until like god showed me like mm -mm, you're not coming to my presence without forgiveness in your heart you need, let's deal with it you know confess your sins confess how you're feeling and you really can be that transparent with the lord and that's the thing that's just what i want to say if i don't if i can't say anything else you may think that people will judge you and they may people judge you your mama your sister your brother co-workers friends this and that they may judge you they may have something to say but the one person that you can be your most transparent authentic self is with god i mean he already knows everything about you but it's more so like you revealing you to you you know as you pray you know you, when you pray and start saying your feelings and stuff you be like dang i didn't even know i felt that way i didn't even know that was there you know and that's what god wants to come out and you may not you may not be able to go and tell your therapist your deepest darkest secrets you may not have that access or anything like that because you know people talk a lot about mental health and stuff but look you still gotta schedule an appointment you gotta be on their time but you can dial up the lord in your heart and sincerely pray and confess and just know that god is with you god is wherever you are you know what i mean when you sincerely are seeking him you know what i mean he will come to you and i will always say this too get into your bible it's almost <laughs> you ever had those moments when you be opening up your bible and then you come across a scripture and it's like exactly what you needed to see at that moment with your situation it was nothing that you planned that was God. Like, he be with us. He really do. But it's just like taking the time to stop and reflect and see his hand in every situation. You know what I mean? When you sincerely want to seek him. He know your heart. So that's why I just say, like, come before him exactly how you are. You don't have to talk in a fancy prayer or anything like that. You don't got to be all eloquent, like what you see on TV or maybe like from back in the day when you used to, you know, you don't have to be that. Just be you. You know, God is your father, which art in heaven. So he knows you. You're his child. You know, like how your parent be knowing you. You know, you can, you know they know you. They know when you upset. They know because they, they are around you. They study you. And that's how God is. Like he's always watching over his people. And he watches over you. So I say all that to say, you know, this message was really about um, relationship goals and you know how our relationship with god should be the goal you know relationship with people is cool too but i just realized that <sighs> it'll never probably fulfill you not probably it'll never fulfill you in the way that your relationship with god was like two different things and i think we try to make people put people on a god-like pedestal and try to put god-like expectations on people you know, people will let you down. It's because we're all, we're faulty. We're human. Like we're made out of flesh, you know? So yeah, I may let you down, even though I have like the best intention not to, 
but God won't. You know what I mean? He'll never fail you, never forsake you. And this is true, you know? Sinquetta may say that she may be there, but I may, you know, I may get caught up in traffic. I may, I may let you down when I'm trying, like, I'm supposed to be there to help you out. It just may happen. But that's why you can't put your trust in people in that kind of way. You know what I mean? Always put your trust in God. You will not be disappointed. You know, I had to learn that. So that's how I want to tell you. I'm telling you what I learned. You know what I mean? I'm just telling you what I learned. Don't put God expectations on people. And that's all I wanted to say. But I will talk to you guys again. Don't forget my book. The Master Reset, A Girl's Ultimate Guide to Clearing Off Her Spiritual Hard Drive is out now on Amazon. And again, The Master Reset is just about starting from scratch. Getting all the old mindsets off your hard drive, your mental hardware. You know what I mean? Because that's what's programming you and making you act and think and talk the way that you are. And just replacing that with God's word. So you can like perform at high optimal speeds okay like we're in this together you know what i mean like you you think you all that now put that word of god in you transform your life all right talk to you guys later bye